Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining Tribe Bakurim on this daily prayer and Bible reading journey. We will read through the Bible using the one-year Bible reading plan and end in prayer. Today is November 19th, and we will be reading from Ezekiel chapter 39 verses 1 through 39 and chapter 40 verses 1 through 27. James chapter 2 verses 18 through 26 and chapter 3 verses 1 through 18. Psalm chapter 118 verses 1 through 18. And Proverbs chapter 28 verse 2. Let's begin. Ezekiel chapter 39 verses 1 through 29. You, son of man. Prophesy against God, and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Gog, Prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, and will lead you on, and will cause you to come up from the uttermost parts of the north, and I will bring you on to the mountains of Israel. I will strike your bow out of your left hand, and will cause your arrows to fall out of your right hand. You will fall on the mountains of Israel you and all your hordes, and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the animals of the field, to be devoured. You will fall on the open field, for I have spoken it, says the Lord, Yahweh. I will send a fire on Magog, and on those who dwell securely in the islands. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. I will make my holy name known among my people Israel. I won't allow my holy name to be profaned any more. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it comes, and it will be done, says the Lord, Yahweh. This is the day about which I have spoken. Those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and will make fires of the weapons and burn them, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the war clubs and the spears, and they will make fires with them for seven years, so that they will take no wood out of the field, and not cut down any out of the forests, for they will make fires with the weapons. They will plunder those who plundered them, and rob those who robbed them, says the Lord Yahweh. It will happen in that day that I will give to Gog a place for burial in Israel, the valley of those who pass through on the east of the sea, and it will stop those who pass through. They will bury Gog and all his multitude there, and they will call it the Valley of Haman Gog. The house of Israel will be burying them for seven months, that they may cleanse the land. Yes, all the people of the land will bury them, and they will become famous in the day that I will be glorified, says the Lord Yahweh. They will set apart men of continual employment who will pass through the land, those who pass through will go with those who bury those who remain on the surface of the land to cleanse it. After the end of seven months, they will search. Those who pass through the land will pass through, and when anyone sees a man's bone, then he will set up a sign by it until the undertakers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. Hamona will also be the name of a city. Thus they will cleanse the land. You, son of man, the Lord Yahweh says, Speak to the birds of every sort, and to every animal of the field. Assemble yourselves, and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, that I sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel, that you may eat meat and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty, and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bulls, all of them fatlings of Bashan. You shall eat fat until you are full, and drink blood until you are drunk of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, says the Lord Yahweh. I will set my glory among the nations. Then all the nations will see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid on them. So the house of Israel will know that I am Yahweh, their God, from that day and forward. The nations will know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me, and I hid my face from them. So I gave them into the hand of their adversaries, 
and they all fell by the sword. I did to them according to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions. I hid my face from them. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Now I will reverse the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy on the whole house of Israel. I will be jealous for my holy name. They will bear their shame, and all their trespasses by which they have trespassed against me, when they dwell securely in their land, and no one will make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, they will know that I am Yahweh their God, in that I caused them to go into captivity among the nations, and have gathered them to their own land. Then I will leave none of them captive any more. I won't hide my face from them any more, for I have poured out my Spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh. Ezekiel chapter 40 verses 1 through 27 In the twenty-fifth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year after that the city was struck, in the same day Yahweh's hand was on me, and he brought me there. In the visions of God he brought me into the land of Israel, and set me down on a very high mountain, on which was something like the frame of a city to the south. He brought me there, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of bronze, with a line of flax in his hand, and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. The man said to me, Son of man, see with your eyes, and hear with your ears, and set your heart on all that I will show you, for you have been brought here, so that I may show them to you. Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. Behold, there was a wall on the outside of the house all around, and in the man's hand a measuring reed, six cubits long, of a cubit and a hand width each. So he measured the thickness of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then he came to the gate which looks toward the east, and went up its steps. He measured the threshold of the gate, one reed wide, and the other threshold, one reed wide. Every lodge was one reed long and one reed wide. Between the lodges was five cubits. The threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate toward the house was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate toward the house, one reed. Then he measured the porch of the gate, eight cubits, and its posts, two cubits. And the porch of the gate was toward the house. The lodges of the gate eastward were three on this side, and three on that side. The three of them were of one measure. The posts had one measure on this side and on that side. He measured the width of the opening of the gate, ten cubits, and the length of the gate, thirteen cubits, and a border before the lodges, one cubit on this side, and a border, one cubit on that side, and the lodges, six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. He measured the gate from the roof of the one lodge to the roof of the other, a width of twenty-five cubits, door against door. He also made posts, sixty cubits, and the court reached to the posts around the gate, from the forefront of the gate at the entrance to the forefront of the inner porch of the gate, were fifty cubits. There were closed windows to the lodges and to their posts within the gate all around and likewise to the arches. Windows were around inward. Palm trees were on each post. Then he brought me into the outer court. Behold, there were rooms and a pavement made for the court all around. Thirty rooms were on the pavement. The pavement was by the side of the gates, corresponding to the length of the gates, even the lower pavement. Then he measured the width from the forefront of the lower gate to the forefront of the inner court outside. 100 cubits, both on the east and on the north. He measured the length and width of the gate of the outer court, which faces toward the north. The lodges of it were three on this side and three on that side. Its posts and its arches were the same as the measure of the first gate. Its length was 50 cubits and the width 25 cubits. Its windows, its arches, and its palm trees were the same as the measure of the gate which faces toward the east. They went up to it by seven steps. Its arches were before them. There was a gate to the inner court, 
facing the other gate on the north and on the east. He measured 100 cubits from gate to gate. He led me toward the south, and behold, there was a gate toward the south. He measured its posts and its arches according to these measurements. There were windows in it and in its arches all around, like those windows. The length was 50 cubits and the width 25 cubits. There were seven steps to go up to it, and its arches were before them. It had palm trees, one on this side and another on that side, on its posts. There was a gate to the inner court toward the south. He measured 100 cubits from gate to gate toward the south. James chapter 2 verses 18 through 26 Yes, a man will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe, and shudder. But do you want to know, vain man, that faith apart from works is dead? Wasn't Abraham our father justified by works in that he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith worked with his works, and by works faith was perfected. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that by works a man is justified, and not only by faith. In the same way, wasn't Rahab the prostitute also justified by works, in that she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, even so faith apart from works is dead. James chapter 3 verses 1 through 18 Let not many of you be teachers, my brothers, knowing that we will receive heavier judgment, for we all stumble in many things. Anyone who doesn't stumble in word is a perfect person, able to bridle the whole body also. Indeed, we put bits into the horses' mouths so that they may obey us, and we guide their whole body. Behold, the ships also, though they are so big and are driven by fierce winds, are yet guided by very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. So the tongue is also a little member, and boasts great things. See how a small fire can spread to a large forest. And the tongue is a fire. The world of iniquity among our members is the tongue, which defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by Gehenna. For every kind of animal, bird, creeping thing, and sea creature is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But nobody can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who are made in the image of God. Out of the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send out from the same opening fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, yield olives, or a vine figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by his good conduct that his deeds are done in gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and don't lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition are, there is confusion in every evil deed. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Psalm chapter 118 verses 1 through 18 Give thanks to Yahweh, for He is good, for His loving kindness endures forever. Let Israel now say that his loving kindness endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his loving kindness endures forever. Now let those who fear Yahweh say that his loving kindness endures forever. Out of my distress, 
I called on Yah. Yah answered me with freedom. Yahweh is on my side. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Yahweh is on my side among those who help me. Therefore, I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. It is better to take refuge in Yahweh than to put confidence in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in Yahweh's name, I cut them off. They surrounded me, yes, they surrounded me. In Yahweh's name, I indeed cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They are quenched like the burning thorns. In Yahweh's name, I cut them off. You pushed me back hard to make me fall, but Yahweh helped me. Yah is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of Yahweh does valiantly. The right hand of Yahweh is exalted. The right hand of Yahweh does valiantly. I will not die, but live and declare Yah's works. Yah has punished me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 2 In rebellion, a land has many rules. But order is maintained by man of understanding and knowledge. Abba, Father, we give thanks to you for everything. We are eternally grateful for all you have done for us. Although we fail you daily, you continue to show us love, grace and mercy. Your love is unfathomable and it never fails. We acknowledge your sovereignty in all the earth and thank you for being our God. We recognize you in your power and ask your forgiveness for anything we have said, done or thought that was unpleasing to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. Bless us with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, maturity, discernment and focused minds. Take away any thoughts or feelings that are not in alignment with you. Open our eyes to the wonderful things of your law and make it an engrafted word in us. May we live lives according to your will denounce our sinful nature, lay our sins at your feet and walk in obedience to you for your glory. Lord, as we do good deeds for others, may we always be motivated by a true desire to please you and you alone. Deliver us from hypocritical mindsets and pride. In all that we do, may our actions always be for your glory. Bless us to be true worshipers after your own heart. May our heart's desire always line up with yours that we may be pleasing in your sight. We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you and ask that you make us aware of your presence and what you are doing in the earth today. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep our physical bodies, our nation, homes, modes of transportation, places of employment, bank accounts, credit and investments and communities safe from all hurt, harm and danger. Expose and obliterate anything that dares to come against your people. Bring complete and total healing to our minds, emotions, and bodies. May your perfect will be done in the earth. We pray this prayer over ourselves and everyone connected to us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the shalom peace of God follow you for the rest of your days.